Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Anil Taylor. I'm a consultant gynecologist and I practice in the UK. So in this uh, uh, video, which is a three-part video, I want to discuss uh, what happens when somebody is first diagnosed with a uh, uh, cervical cancer and how we uh, eventually decide what treatment they're going to receive. So it's a three-part video and in the first video uh, I'll be discussing what our initial priorities are as clinicians um, and then in the second video I will talk about how we go about gathering that information, meaning doing all the scans uh, to find out the information that we need to then decide what treatment that that person will receive and that will be covered in the third video. So please watch all these videos um, together uh, if you can uh, to help you understand the uh, our, our thought processes. Now I have also uploaded many other videos, um, some on the subject of smears, abnormal smears, colposcopy, um, uh, HPV. Please go and uh, search these out um, as uh, they may also be helpful to you. So, um, to start off with, uh, cervical cancer, how do we see those patients? What leads up to a diagnosis of cervical cancer? So, um, it, in many instances, um, it can be because of a recent abnormal smear. Now, uh, please don't panic if you have got an abnormal smear. Uh, to have a, a cancer as a result of that is actually very uncommon. Please remember that abnormal smears are trying to pick up pre-cancer, not cancer. Um, and uh, uh, it's really uh, a small minority of those women with abnormal smears. In fact, those with the, a, a severe grade abnormality, um, about 3% of those severe grade abnormalities uh, will end up having a, a, a cervical cancer. And having a severe grade abnormality in the first place is not that common. The commoner smear abnormalities are the low grade, the mild abnormalities or moderate abnormalities. Um, moderate is a high grade, but it would get treated. But it's the, if you have a severe abnormality, then about 3% of those can turn out to have a cervical cancer. So an abnormal smear is one way that we would come across a, a, a new diagnosis of cervical cancer. The other way would be uh, if a patient uh, has been having abnormal symptoms such as an unusual vaginal discharge or some irregular vaginal bleeding or especially bleeding following intercourse. Now bleeding following intercourse um, can be a sign of cancer but in the vast majority there isn't a cancer underlying it. So if you are experiencing uh, postcoital bleeding, then please don't panic. Again, um, have it checked out. Uh, it is important to get it checked out, but in all probability, it will not have a cancer underlying it. So, um, those are the situations that we would come across um, somebody with a new diagnosis of cancer. The other way would be, for instance, if a, smear, a GP has done an examination and, and seen a lump on the cervix and as a result uh, the, the patient gets referred to the hospital and uh, we then biopsy it and we pick up that cancer. So uh, when we see these patients uh, who have a uh, potential diagnosis of a cervical cancer, what is our first priority? What are we trying to find out uh, from the outset? And, and the answer to that question is we are trying to find out how much cancer there is. And that's a concept of staging, cancer staging. Uh, we are trying to find out how much cancer there is and that will then allow us to then decide uh, what the best form of treatment will be for that particular patient. Now, a, a lot of lay people get confused between cancer stage and cancer grade. Um, so stage is um, asking the question, how much cancer is there or, or um, how far has the cancer spread? Now, uh, grading 
or a cancer grade is information about how aggressive do the cancer cells appear under the microscope. So this is something that the pathologist tells us um, uh, by looking at the tissue under the microscope. So please remember that uh, grading is something that the pathologist will tell us after we've given them a biopsy to make the diagnosis of cancer and then how, how uh, aggressive it is looking. So uh, grade can be uh, uh, in, uh, termed into uh, grade one or two or three. So a low grade cancer would be grade one or a high grade cancer would be grade three. Um, so the, uh, uh, the pathologist is able to make that grade depending on sort of um, how the cancer cells are looking, how they're behaving, what they're doing to adjacent tissues or adjacent cancers, uh, other uh, normal cancer, uh, normal cells, uh, and 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 from that can give that grading. Uh, the other way that the uh, the pathologist may may uh, grade would be to call it well differentiated or moderately well differentiated or poorly differentiated, and they uh, respectively uh, correspond with grade one, grade two, and grade three. So let's look at cancer staging um, in, in, in more detail because this is uh, how we decide how the patient is going to be uh, treated. So staging goes from stage 1A, A1A1, uh, which is the earlier stage, and all the way up to stage 4B. And then in between there are the um, other grades, uh, sorry, stages. And so if, for instance, the uh, cancer is just confined to the cervix, then that is a stage 1B. If it is uh, sort of spilling out to the sides of the uh, cervix to, to into the ligaments, then that's a stage 2B. Um, and if it is sort of uh, going all the way to the pelvic side wall, then that becomes a stage 3B. Of course, there are all other, can uh, other stages as well. Um, and this is the, the old uh, uh, staging system that I've just described. Uh, it was the staging system that uh, was uh, in operation between 1989 and, and 2018. Um, uh, so the newer staging system, they have added a, so a uh, 1B3, uh, a st uh, the, the, the stage 2A has been separated into 1 and 2, and then they've introduced a, a, a stage 3C category as well. Um, but for the purposes of, of uh, this video, the old staging system is adequate in explaining the principles of how we decide how somebody is going to be treated. So uh, that is all I want to say in this video. Uh, please remember that this is only the first part and in the second part I will be discussing uh, how we go about staging uh, the cancer, meaning the scans that we would do uh, to uh, find out more information about the cancer and then finally in the third video I will talk about how that information is used to decide the best treatment for the patient. I have many other videos that have been uploaded um, on smears, colposcopy, um, uh, HPV, all sorts of things. Please uh, consider searching them out. Um, and uh, if you find these videos helpful, then please consider subscribing or at least uh, uh, clicking the like button. Thank you very much and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.